Hey, Ray Delvecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Today, we're going to go through how to add Google fonts to your website. And with WordPress, some themes have this built in, but not all of them. And usually the right way to customize is by creating a child theme. So that's what we're going to do. And I'll show you how to do it both with the more modern block themes that work with the full site editing and also with an older theme where we can do it manually through code. So what you're going to want to install is this plugin called Create Block Theme. And it's developed by WordPress. Here's the plugin page right here. And when you have this activated, as long as you have a block theme activated as well, you can go over to the appearance section and you'll see this option, create block theme and manage theme fonts. So they build the Google font integration directly into this plugin. So you don't have to do it manually by copy and pasting any code. Now, right now I have the 2024 theme installed. It might actually just work with the parent theme, but if you want to do any further customizations, it is a good practice to create a child theme. And after all, that is the purpose of this plugin. So let's go over to create block theme and they give you a few options of what you can do. So you can either clone your current theme, overwrite it, create a blank theme, or what we're going to do is create a child theme here. And this is very similar to the plugin that we're going to use in just a few moments here before block themes existed. All you have to do is go through and fill in the required fields so you can name it. And I'll just call this architecture because that is the theme of 2024. And we can scroll down here. You can upload a screenshot once you finish your design. But right now, I think that's the only required field. So let me go ahead and generate this. They're actually giving us an error here saying the theme name is not available in the WordPress.org theme directory. So maybe they require you to pick a unique name just in case you decide to publish this theme. So I'll just add in a couple more characters there. So that's unique. We'll hit generate. And this one doesn't actually create the theme on your web server. It just gave us a download there. So it gives you the zip file, which we can upload manually. So let's go back to appearance themes. We'll click add new theme. And instead of searching it out on the theme directory, we can just upload our zip file. We'll click the install now button and we can activate this. And you can see, since we don't have the screenshot, we just have kind of a transparent background there. But now I'll go over to Manage Theme Fonts, and I'll click Add Google Font. And this is where you can select your font from Google. So I recommend going over to Google, picking whatever font you want. In this case, I'm going to pick uh, one called Marcellus. So if I go back over here, that should be available to us if we type it out, and it's right here. And then once you select a font, they'll give you the variations. This one only has one weight and style. So I'll just check off whatever variations I'd like and click Add Google Fonts to your theme. So now that we have that done, if we click the back button here, we'll see our custom font added. And now if we go into the editor to edit our theme and customize it, we should be able to see that from the drop-down menu. So let me jump over to the styles here, and I will click the Edit Styles button. And by the way, I have... a uh, full tutorial going through 2024. If you'd like to see how to customize your templates, go a little bit further than just the typography. I'll link that up in the top right. But from here, we can go to the typography. I'll just click the text. And now under our dropdown, we can see our custom font, Marcellus. Now, let me show you how to do this manually if you have an older theme. So for this, I activated the 2021 theme. That was the last one before they released full site editing. And for this, we're going to use a plugin called Child Theme Configurator. I'll jump over to the plugin page here. And this one has a lot more active installations, 300,000. I think the other one had just about 8,000. Obviously, it's newer. This one's been around for a lot longer. But this was always my go-to to create a child theme. And this menu option, I believe, is in the Tools menu. So if we go here down to the Child Theme submenu within Tools, we go through a similar process to what we just did. And if you've been customizing already, you may have a child theme installed. So you definitely want to check that out. I don't recommend installing a child theme if you have a heavily customized website because you might lose those customizations. But we'll just go ahead and create a new child theme. And we select the parent theme here. So let me do 2021. We'll click the Analyze button. This is going to be the directory name, and we're going to go into the web server through FTP to upload our child theme files to do this customization. I want to show you how to do it the manual way, even though there's probably plugins out there that allow you to hook into Google Fonts. But at least this way, you'll get a better understanding of what's going on. I think that that is all we need to edit. Let me go down here and just click Create New Child Theme, and we have our success message. And I'll go back to Appearance Themes, and you can see our child theme down here. So let me activate that. Let's go back to Google Fonts. Click into Marcellus, and 
If we click the get font button, you can either grab the embed code or click the download all. We'll click the download button. And then once we do that, we have this page here that actually gives us a guide for self-hosting web fonts. One thing I noticed on this page is that as an example, they give you the WAF2 file type for the font. So there's like three or four different types of files that are used for font faces. And I think if you wanna make sure that you have consistency across every browser type, it's good to put in CSS code for all of those font types. But if we go to our zip file, you can see that Google only gives you one type and that's the TTF type. But I found a tool that automatically converts the TTF type into all these different formats. And by the way, I'll link up a file in the description below that goes through these steps that hopefully you can follow that pretty easily without watching this video again. I'll include this link for this Google downloader. So let me use this third party tool and I'll search out Marcellus. Now I'm not an expert again with fonts, so I don't know exactly what these two character sets do. I'm just gonna leave everything checked. And they give you CSS code as well that you can copy and paste, which is very convenient. This is just asking for that path to the font files. So you're gonna see how all this works in just a moment here. Let me click download fonts. And this is also gonna give us a zip file, but it's gonna have more files in there because it's gonna give us again, the various font types, as well as the CSS code that we're gonna need. So here's a look inside this zip file. And let's now open up our FTP program, FileZilla. I'm connected to the web server, and this is what a WordPress installation looks like. And your plugins and your themes are located in the WP content folder. So let me double click into this, and we can go into our themes. And the one that we just activated is the 2021 child. There's only three files in here, and that's your style.css, the screenshot, and the functions.php. So it's very simple installation. All we have to do is upload the fonts. So let me create a folder on this web server. I'll create a new directory, and I'm going to call it fonts. And then I got to just unzip this file and drag and drop all of the font files over. I'll just duplicate that same folder fonts on here and I'll copy and paste just the font files. I'm not going to copy and paste the CSS file. We're going to put that code into the styles.css. So let me copy these into the fonts folder. And then over here, I can refresh our FTP program. And I can really just drag and drop this entire folder over here. And if we go into the fonts folder on our web server, you'll see our file types. And let's open up that font.css file. I'll copy this up a level just out of that zip folder. And this is the declaration that we need. This is what adds the font to our web page. We set the font family. And then these are the URLs. So right now I have the two dots in this URL. And you can see we have the fonts directory and then our files. So all of these should be good. All you have to make sure is that your relative URL is correct. These two dots in the front, that actually takes us back a level. So if you think about it, the style.css is here and we're referencing the fonts directory. So that dot dot, we don't need it anymore. I should have actually removed that on the generator, but I can easily do that right here. So let me just get rid of, oh, made a mistake there. Let me just get rid of all these double dots. And I'm also going to get rid of the forward slash because that would take us back to the root directory. I want to keep this relative to the current directory that the CSS file is located. So I believe this is going to work for us. And the only other thing we need to add is where this font should be used. So right now this adds the font so that we're able to use it, but we're not actually declaring it anywhere. So let me copy this. I'm going to go back to FileZilla and I'm going to copy over the style.css from our child theme. And then I'll open that up in Notepad++. And right now, this is just a comment. So there's actually no code in this. But this is where that stuff that you filled out when you created the child theme, this is where it goes. WordPress uses this information to show on the back end in the WordPress admin. So all I have to do is copy in or paste in that font face declaration. And now we got to use it somewhere. What I recommend doing is applying it to the body element. That's the topmost level element. You can just use the font family property and set that to Marcellus. So let's test this out. I'll save it and upload it and we'll refresh our page. And right now this theme has no design for the most part. I can tell that our Google fonts working because that's showing down here, but it looks like the primary fonts are still whatever they were set to before. So let me open up Google Inspector, just right click and hit the inspect. 
and let me bring in this window here. If we select an element and go over to the right, we'll be able to see where the font family is being declared. And if I scroll down, the first instance of this, I think, is right here. So it looks like our font family is being set by a variable heading font family. Let me click on this. And within this theme, you can tell our parent style.css. That's where this CSS is originating from, which you can tell in the top right here. This is setting it to the root element. So the key with CSS is to find exactly where the CSS property is being applied and overwrite that exact property. So let me go back to our CSS. I'm going to do another statement here with that root element. Let me go back to the Chrome inspector. And I was looking at the heading font family, which that's also using a variable, the global font primary. And that's the first thing that's declared here. So it looks like in order to overwrite this, we would probably need to overwrite the global font primary and the global font secondary. So let me copy and paste these and I'll set these to Marcellus as well. And let me just copy and paste this and I'll change primary to secondary. And I'll save that. Let me upload it and then we'll test it out. So let's refresh here. And now we got that font being applied to all these elements. So this is where things get a little theme specific. You have to see where the CSS font is being applied within your parent theme, whatever parent theme you're using. In this case, we're using 2021, which was developed by WordPress. And then if you want to mix fonts, you can do that. But at least this way, you're adding Google fonts locally. And you can see pretty much how it's done on the back end, even if you do it through a plugin. This is what's happening on the back end with the CSS and the HTML code. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful to add Google fonts to your website. Now, most of my websites are built with Divi by Elegant Themes which is a premium visual builder on WordPress, and that has Google Fonts integrated within it. I'll link them up in the description below. You can get there through my affiliate link as well, websiteprofitcourse.com slash Divi. And if you are a web designer who works frequently with WordPress, like I just mentioned, I manage a bunch of websites for small businesses, and I have a cheat sheet with all my favorite tools within my workflow. So if you want to grab that free giveaway, you can go to my homepage, websiteprofitcourse.com. It's called 15 Tools to Start Your Web Design Business. And while you're on there, go ahead and check out my blog. I got a bunch of other tutorials that you might like. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to get future tutorials. Don't forget to hit that bell icon for notifications. And let me know in the comments below if you were able to get Google Fonts successfully added to your site today. Or if you got any other questions, you can drop a line. That's all I got for today. And I'll link up a few tutorials here if you want to keep on learning.